Commissioner Scott Maddox and CEO of the Downtown Improvement Authority, Paige Carter-Smith, were indicted on Wednesday on 44 counts of conspiring to operate a racketeering enterprise that included acts of bank fraud and extortion. This has been a three-year-long investigation. Both Maddox and Carter-Smith were in court Wednesday, were told, in shackles. As the indictment counts were read out loud, both pleaded not guilty to all counts and were released. They could be facing a maximum of 30 years in prison if they are convicted of these charges. Tallahassee Mayor John Daly says transparency is key in city government. I have three dedicated colleagues along with myself that we are committed to an accountable and transparent policy, uh, process. We are going to select uh, the best individual from the city of Tallahassee that can fill out the rest of this term. This all stems from two companies. The FBI says Maddox and Carter Smith conspired to operate under the names of Governance Inc. and Governance Services LLC during the time Maddox was a sitting city commissioner. It's alleged he continued to control the company and was paid hundreds of thousands of dollars from it. Carter Smith is accused of helping him cover it up. We reached out to both Paige Carter Smith and Scott Maddox. Neither have returned our phone calls or messages. As of right now, their trial is set for mid-January. As for Carter Smith, Tallahassee Downtown Improvement Authority Chairman Chris Dudley says she notified him of her plans to step down from her position as Chief Executive Director, but he is not sure when she will officially resign. <laughs> Now to our other top story. Continuing coverage of the Denise Williams trial. Prosecutors say she is involved in her then-husband's death 18 years ago. Our Jennifer Myers recaps another full day of court. A homicide investigation is underway in Moultrie. Authorities are searching for suspects. The Georgia Bureau of Investigation responded to First Avenue Northwest around 10 o'clock Wednesday morning. The victim was found by a family member during a wellness check. Now, the GBI is not identifying the victim, but say the victim did not die from natural causes. They have not identified any suspects and ask you to contact them with any information. The Marjorie Stoneman Douglas High School Public Safety Commission released its first draft of recommendations to improve school safety. They met Wednesday morning at the Donald L. Tucker Civic Center. Members are offering recommendations about safety measures in the wake of the deadly mass shooting last February in Parkland, where 17 people were killed. The report says there were many lapses in security ahead of the school shooting. Those lapses in included security, unlocked doors and entrances at the school, along with sheriff's deputies who failed to quickly confront the attacker. The commission's goal is to present a final report to the governor and legislative leaders by January 1st. As we know, change is hard. In many cases, it's controversial. And in some cases, it's resisted. But it's necessary if we're going to do better and ensure that every kid who goes to school in the morning comes home at night. The report offers suggestions to improve school safety, including limiting entry and exit points, restricting visitors on campus during school hours, and keeping classroom doors locked. The committee is expected to meet again this morning at 8.30. No crashes to report to you by FHP this morning, so good news for drivers. We do see some traffic concerns at the interchange of 61 and Capitol Circle Southeast in Tallahassee, also at the interchange of 20 and along 263, and then near Perkins heading into downtown Tallahassee, so some trouble spots there. Keep that in mind when you're heading out the door in Tallahassee. Let's take a look in South Georgia, Thomasville. Not too much to report to you, just a slight hang up on Cassidy Road. 319 is running smoothly at this hour. It is 610. And in Valdosta, no fog to report to you. Um, hopefully your windshields aren't frosted over like they were yesterday morning. Uh, 41 at the interchange there. We do see some traffic issues there. Uh, downtown Valdosta looks good. And 75 is running smoothly at this hour. So not too bad on the roadways this morning. That'll do for your check of traffic for right now. As FEMA checks roll in for people in our area affected by Hurricane Michael, Many of you may be heading to the hardware store to buy supplies for home repairs. Well, starting today, homeowners can find some help while shopping thanks to FEMA. Our Jada Williams live for us this morning at the Home Depot. Jada, what's this all about? Jada, thank you. Still to come for you this morning, President Donald Trump's former attorney has now learned his fate. Just how long he's expected to be behind bars.
And technology just keeps getting better and better. Could you imagine sleeping on a bed that floats? This $1.6 million magnetic floating bed really floats off the ground and could be yours if you win the Mega Millions jackpot. It's now up to $262 million. Catch the next drawing tomorrow before our 11 p.m. newscast. This might be good for there? sleepwalkers, though, you know what I mean? Yeah, you fall Because then they're just floating and, and no, so you, you won't hurt yourself. Also, Powerball, $246 million. So Here's a look at last night's numbers. Catch that drawing Saturday night. Well, if you felt falling on the stairs sleepwalking, <laughs> you would know. Here's a look at the Florida Lotto and Fantasy 5 numbers.